Yo, what up? This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go. Today, I got a special guest in the building. Um, man, sneakerhead or sneaker aficionado, music aficionado. <laughs> you know, this man knows a whole lot. And um, shit, my brother's keeper, man. Can you please introduce yourself to the people? Absolutely, man. Um, my name is Olawale Awara. Um, I'm a young Nigerian from South Central LA. Um, I'm a husband first. I'm a creative. Um, and yeah, I'm just here to be a vessel, man, in any way I can, honestly. <laughs> the way that I know how. Yeah. At least. Sure. How you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that's what's up. Before we get started, I'm gonna have us all take three breaths, me, you, and the listeners, just to bring us all in the same space. So you could close your eyes and you could keep them open. Sure. Are we gonna breathe in? Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. We gonna breathe in one more time. And let it go. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Shoot, welcome to the podcast. Man, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Man, like I, I feel like I've been wanting to bring you on for a while because we always have just really dope conversations. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the, the timing feels perfect just because uh, I feel like people need you right, man, right now, man. And I don't know if you know that. But, you know, just kind of from what we were talking about before with, you know, just men needing those outlets and stuff and just everything that you're doing, you know, with my brother's. Well, first, can can you tell the people what my brother's keeper is? Yes. Uh, um, My brother's keeper is a nonprofit uh, that I run. It's for men. It's centered around mental health uh, where we focus on identity, purpose and self-care. Um, prior to this quarantine, what I was doing was it's something that was birthed that I believe the Holy Spirit gave me, um, back in December of 2018. Um, something that was very unfamiliar with me, something that was very uncomfortable, something that I didn't understand. Um, it started, I had my first official meeting with about five guys at my house, um, in February of 2019. Um, and from then it just started to, I made it with time. It just started to grow. I started doing it quarterly. Um, so it will be every three months we'll have a brunch. It's turned into a brunch. It's literally the beginning of being able to bring men together. Um, and you know, us as men, we're, a lot of us are Superman. You know, we like to save everybody. We like to be there for everyone. You know, it's a very admirable position, but what I find, uh, what I found out was that, you know, before you can be Superman, you have to be Clark Kent first. Um, and I believe that if we took the time to really understand Clark Kent, it will make us a sharper, stronger Superman. That's what's up, man. And you know, I think every time that I've came, I've definitely gotten something out. And uh-huh. how have you, how have you converted to, because I know your your format of what you do is like mainly, you know, in person and connecting like that. But how have you created that space for your people to connect digitally now that that's the way that we have to go? Oh, that's good. That's really good, man. That's a good question. Um, It's funny you bring that up. I'm actually working right now uh, with a, a team of guys. Um, and I'm so thankful for it, man. Shout out to Andrew Blunk and Renal Colson, um, Brandon Rainey. Um, we are working towards having a brunch, actually. That's what's this, up. This month. We're going to have a brunch this month at the end of the month. Um, so this is the first time it's ever been set out in the public. But uh, we've been, you know, we're doing that. Uh, we have social media platforms now. We just launched our Instagram account, My Brother's Keeper, um, the last week in April. Uh, what we're doing is, it's a, this, this is a really good question, bro. I'm excited to talk about it because I haven't really talked about this yeah. um, to anyone. Um, but so 
what we're doing is like our Instagram account that we've created will now be for like highlights and updates or, you know, opportunities and things that are happening. What we're really going to do is uh, we already, we just started our Facebook too. We launched our Facebook. Now what our Facebook will be is that during this quarantine, it gives us a day to day. It allows people from all over the world to be able to interact from a day to day. So it will be strictly men only, um, you know, where, where no matter what walk of life you come from and we'll literally just have conversation day to day, whether it be questions or whether it be comments or something that a men, you know, that men make, we'll be able to have that day to day form conversation um, on Facebook. Outside of that, is it will all lead up to the brunch that we're going to have at the end of the month in May. So that way, you know, it's almost like, you know, if Mike Brown, you know, from Houston, Texas meets, you know, Jeremy from New Zealand, they're able to come together through that, you know, because, because we're, you know, in quarantine and thank God for all, you know, our online resources, they can come together and you know finally meet up at the brunch where it's like our almost like the commencement of everything you know what i'm saying um and then that would just lead up to more events and things that will happen once we're out of quarantine um i know it's kind of long man some something that i think about a lot because uh you know i've i've experienced a lot of men's brunches and the one thing that i noticed the most and just like just spaces for men in general to speak. But the thing I noticed the most is like people of the LGBT community mm-hmm. don't show up as much. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think my biggest thing just being a part of the community is trying to understand, like, how do we bridge that gap? That's amazing. That's a good, good, good question um i think what it really boils down to number one i understand exactly what you're saying um and i I don't want to i don't put you know my brunch on a pedestal or anything like that but i'll be honest to say that you know we've been afforded the opportunity to have people from the lgbtq community to be a part um and i think that it's not something that if i can be you know frank it's not something that i will make that i focus on yeah. It's not something that I make a big deal out of. Uh, the reason being is just because, um, you know, I'm a pastor. He always says he has a, a sermon that he preached called When God Suspends the Rules. And, you know, basically he was saying, you know, <clears throat> if we all wore our biggest, you know, our struggles, or if we were all wore it on each our, you know, on our foreheads, or, you know, if it was a shirt in front of us, there's a lot that we couldn't say about one another. And so I look at, you know, uh, a person's sexual preference at that same way. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not my job to judge anybody. It's not my job to frown up on what you do. Um, because if you knew the things that I would do, you could have judgment about the things that I do. So um, what I focus on is just loving somebody. I believe that we are the salt and light of the world and that it's not my job to tell you what you're doing is right or wrong. That's not even a topic of conversation. Um, I believe that's why a lot of, you know, LBG, LBG, um, TQ, did I say it right? LB, did I say it right? Okay, okay, you know what I mean. Uh, respectfully, with love, man. I believe that that's the reason why a lot of people have strayed away from church, um, just because they've been hurt by church. They've been, you know, they've uh, they've had people in church judge them and make them feel like because of their preference that the God that we all serve is not loving on them. And I just don't agree with that. You know, yes, there is a heaven and hell, but it's not my job to tell you what you're doing is right or wrong just like it's not your job to tell me i believe that it's our jobs to just love one another and that through love just how christ loves um because there's been tons of things that i've dealt with um let's just take identity you know um i struggle with identity for a big chunk of my life and it wasn't until i just really started communing with god it sounds so churchy man but it's just my heart like where i just really came to god the way that i was 
And I just seen him start to love those things out of me. A lot of times we say, you know, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore. And then when we mess up, it's like, oh, God is mad at me. That's not how God operates. The way that God operates is that he takes you the way that you are and he'll love you so much, meet you where you are. He'll love those things out of you that with time, it'll change the taste. And I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about sexuality. I'm talking about just things in general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I try not to focus on it just because it's not my concern. I'm not worried about what other people think uh, or, you know, what, what if, if there was a transsexual part or if there was a, a homosexual man apart. It doesn't bother me or a bisexual man. I've had bisexual men at my events. I've had, you know, homosexual men at my events. And they all feel as if they belong. And that is the secret ingredient. That is what I really appreciate. Because for me, it is no matter what your sexual preference is, the fact that you are a man, we have the same struggles. We all deal with the same things, man. So why would I sit there and focus on that one piece when there's so many other things that we can be able to work through together? Yeah, man. And I really do appreciate you sharing that because, you know, for me, like I said, being able to, like, a lot of people in the community feel like I, I get a pass and, and maybe I do, you know, maybe I do because of how I am and who I am, but I always try to show brothers that there are brothers that will connect with you with however you are, whoever you are. <laughs> Yeah. That. So that's why I really do appreciate you sharing that, man. I'm a musician, man. So, you know, I mean, there was a time where I was doing music full time. I know tons of people that, you know, are part of that community. And it, it does, if anything, I feel like it says more about you, the person, if you feel a way about someone's sexual preference than the actual person just because i'm comfortable with me man like you know it doesn't it's i'm gonna love you regardless <laughs> you know what i'm saying if anything i think the biggest challenge is for people to just be more comfortable and their uncomfortability like just being comfortable with who they are like unapologetically like when you learn to become comfortable no matter what your sexual preference is because i don't want to focus on that like when you learn to be comfortable with who you are period male or female you start to move different man there's a confidence that you carry there's a confidence that you carry and it's like i always say this all the time i say like man i feel like eminem at eight mile like in that last, the last scene when he had the rap battle with Papa Doc, like, yeah, I do live in a trailer with my mom. My girl did do this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But so fucking what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that just stems from fear, man. Like you can't, people, I'm not, you know, there's a, there's a, a declaration. There's a song that says, you know, I'm no longer a slave to fear. And that was like my purge, bro, in 2018. I lived my whole life by that. In 2018, I literally said, I am no longer a slave to fear. I will not allow fear to control my mind and control my heart posture in the way that I move with things, with people, just period. Opportunities, anything. So that's been one of the biggest things that I've been like learning and working through during this quarantine, like just working through fear. Cause I you know, kind of like we were talking about earlier, I'm not trying to go back to how things were because I'm not just looking at the good things in my life. I'm looking at the, the negative as well. And I see yeah. Yeah. how fear has affected my life. And now seeing myself moving differently within this quarantine uh, is, is really giving me the time to just reprogram everything that I've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. You have to, bro. No, this is what I told people, man. And people thought I was crazy, dude. I'll be looking, I look like, I. in a way, I, I don't want to, you know, lock in on politics, but in, in a way, I understand Bernie. In a way, I understand Kanye. Like, it's just the way that, the, the way that they think, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, the thought process about things, it's, 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 I understand. <laughs> It's like, yo, like, the, what I always said this to people, and I look crazy. I said, you know, in order for us to win in this season, the things that we use as a normal coping mechanism in the past will not work in this season. Yeah, man. The things that you used before, and it's crazy, bro, I'm telling you, because I, I said this, and I know that, you know, 
I look crazy and people are like, oh, here you go. But like now, nah, like I just really believe it. Specifically for men, the things that you use as a normal coping mechanism in other seasons will not work in this season. In fact, the 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 main ingredient to help you get to 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 for you to be able to come out on the other side victorious and stronger is community. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I'm just around a bunch of people that enable me. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the people that you know that are that you're supposed to be around and, you know, accountability partners. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what my brother's keeper is. It's like, listen, man, I just want to be able to show men that, hey, listen, you know, you can, you, you are a man if you do not have, you know, all the money. You are a man that if you do not have all the all the partners, the sexual partners, you are a man not by not just because not be not from the things on the exterior, but the fact that God wakes you up every day. Yeah. That is enough, man. You are enough. Your imperfections are enough. It is okay. You are a human being. You have to feel those things. Why? This is why community is important. Because what time what happens is, is that this is also why I don't force anybody to be a part of my brother's keeper. I don't push it down anyone's throat. Why? Because there has to be a level of willingness that you have within you to even, you must be searching for something right. in, your, in your own personal life for you to even want to be a part of something like that. And so I believe that that's where God comes in. Like you got to leave room for God to do his thing. Like I don't pressure nobody to be a part because I believe that when you come there, you're going to get what you need. And I don't know what that is. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. just the, the fact that the fact that you have community, the fact that you have a group of guys, and that's what I that's what I really focus on, man, too, is just creating a safe space for men to know that, hey, because I'm Superman, too, you can come here, talk about your shit, take your cape off, deal we can deal with these things amongst other sound guys that way we can you know air our stuff out and we can all pour back into one another fill you up recharge you so as soon as you walk out that door you can put your cape back on and go back in the world and be superman to your community to your people yeah you know I mean? yeah man that's why we do it every three months, because I believe I'm like, man, at first I was like, if I do it every month, just knowing me, I'll get burnt out and I won't want to do it. And so I do it quarterly just to allow people time to live. Yeah. That's what's up. You know? Man, what's your biggest lesson of the quarantine? My biggest lesson of the quarantine, let's see, when you're asking good questions, bro, honestly, uh, my biggest lesson of the quarantine has been it always comes back to you. You know, somebody else shared that as well. So that's, that's been kind of common amongst No matter what, it's going to always come back to you. You can blame people. You can point the fingers at people. But at the end of the day, you are 100% in control of the things that you react to. You are 100% in control of yourself, no matter how difficult the shit is, especially as an adult. Yeah. Hold on, man, because uh, <laughs> recording at home, got to put these headphones on. <laughs> Am I lagging or going in and out at all? Nah, you good. Okay. You good. Um, man, how has, how has quarantining been being married? Uh, quarantine being married has been an absolute experience that I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Um, be, and that's what I think people, you know, have to do a better job at is just being honest about their stuff, specifically married couples. I understand exclusivity and, you know, keeping the privacy of your home, but I also am a firm believer that transparency is the, the key ingredient to help unlock people out of cages and uh, uh, help give people courage to not feel bound or shame to things too. So, um, marriage and my arc and, you know, marriage during quarantine has been absolutely amazing. Um, we've had, like I just said to you before, 
you know, the first week, my wife and I, it was absolutely perfect. It was so perfect that we were both like, at any minute, something can happen. <laughs> <laughs> we like all snuggled up under each other and cuddling and, you know, and then after the first week for about two, for about three weeks, man, we just was in the trenches. You know, just different things. Like I said, my um, like I said before, my wife was a musician, a uh, touring musician, and just the last two years of our lives have been completely different. Um, the last two years of my life, I, I feel as if I've been in hiding. I feel like as if I've been in the cave, um, just really working on myself. Um, you know, 2018 was a. I'll talk about that later, but. Um, and I spent a lot of time working on myself the last two years. Um, and during those last two years, my wife was traveling like yeah. nonstop. So if we were around each other, we were around each other for about a couple of days or, you know, maybe a week or a week at most, at most. Um, you know what I'm saying? And during this quarantine, you know, prior to quarantine, we had created our own identities and became our own people individually. But I believe that that was the best thing that ever happened to us because, yeah, obviously the first week it was perfect, but the next three weeks we were really, it was like we were cleaning out my bag. It was like we were cleaning out our suitcase. Yeah. Like cleaning out our baggage and really did, that's why I said it comes back to you for versus now these last you know couple weeks have been absolutely amazing there's just a different love that we have and respect for one another i love my wife just the fact that she chooses to be here every day you know i love my i i take more time and spending quality time with her whether that just be watching a movie or you know because we're in quarantine what we do is you know at least once a week we'll take a drive somewhere and just go That's look at up. the water or you know we'll just like we a couple weeks ago we drove it was a saturday we drove we live in long beach we drove to malibu man got all the way to malibu to find out you know that basically they cut everything off so then what we did was we found like a little parking area in santa monica and we just sat there for hours and just talked we've done it a couple of times and it's just it's so liberating for us to just get to know each other on this level it's like a different level of intimacy it's not about the things we've accomplished it's not about none of that shit it's about like yo and you know she said something to me a couple of days ago that struck a chord with me and um she said you know you know prior to this quarantine she said i didn't like you and, you know, while being in this quarantine, she said, I, you know, I love you. Not only do I love you, but I like you. Like, I like being around you. I just enjoy your company. And for me, it was just like, yo, I feel the same way. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yo, like, yo, you're my, you're my best friend, man. And be I think a lot of times we put limits on things like that, specifically in marriage, because we think, oh, well, you're the husband, you're the wife. And it's like, no, no, no. Yeah, those things are cool. And yes, those are very, those, those are, those are, uh, you know, big titles. But before all of that, there's, you know, friendship. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I love my friend. This is my friend, you know what I mean? We That's what's up. It, and it has been an absolute amazing experience, man. It's not perfect, you know, I'll make that clear. It's not perfect, but it's absolutely amazing. I wouldn't want to be quarantined with anyone else. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> Straight up. Man, what advice would you give to anybody in a relationship or quarantining with somebody? What advice would you give them? Wow. Um, that's crazy that you asked me that question. This is a question that I've been asked just from numerous people just in private time, just literally people calling me about relationship stuff. Um, what advice I would give them is to, you only have control over yourself. There is, there is, yes, you may have expectations and things, you know, you may have goals in mind, but this quarantine is the perfect opportunity, specifically if you're not married, for you to continue to master yourself and work on yourself. Well, what do you mean by that? What does it have to do with relationships? 
what that has to do with relationships is that the more comfortable you are with yourself, the more that you love yourself, the easier it'll be for you to love other people. And I'm saying this as a married man. Had I not taken the time to be more comfortable in who I am, and you know the things that I don't like about myself, I wouldn't be able to carry grace and patience and love towards other people. Be, the only way that I'm able to do that is my tank is full. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely yeah. makes sense. That's what's up, man. Um, it, it always comes back to you when it relates to relationships, man. Relationships, it's a team where it's a team effort. Um, but you know, if you want it to work successfully, you have to continue to work on yourself. And when you do that, what that means is letting your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Yes, there's compromise, but even that is work. You know, compromise is not one person's happy and the other one isn't. Compromise is us finding a way for us to both be happy. Yeah. And what that requires conversation. What that requires us being able to you know, become comfortable. I mean, I'm being real with you. This is like, even on a, on an intimate level, man, like it, it just can't work. It won't work. If you are like, I know for a fact, there's at least 10 people just within a five mile radius of where I am right now that have found their identity in their sex game. Yeah. And they have been in quarantine and they don't have that superpower of fucking right now. And yeah, now has yeah. forced them to really deal with themselves, with themselves. If they choose to. You if, know, if they, they choose, choose to. If they choose to. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it's a lot of people out here running from it. And, you know, for, for me, it's definitely shown me that, you know, I think the reason I'm not in a relationship right now is because in the past I've always looked for completion. Yeah. In a relationship and not necessarily feeling the completion here. That's big, Mike. That's you know, so taking that time to really feel whole by myself makes me feel more comfortable that when it is time to go back to something like that, that I'm more prepared. And I also know what to look for in a partner yeah. as well. Yeah, that's good. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it always comes back to you. Um, with specifically in relationships, man, like there are social media platforms built on by women who are hurt, shaming other men about go ahead and get your bag, sis. These niggas ain't nothing. Like I hear you, but what if we got to deal with the core issue, man? Like that's not it. Are you going to keep blaming everybody? And I, 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 I feel you. But I also I also understand that it is the product of men because you know, yes. granted, we all may be growing now and 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 being older and mature. But there was a time, at least in my twenties, I remember most of my friends was like, "Oh, me too." Gotta be on these hoes. Gotta be on these. Absolutely. Hoes. And now uh, that, 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 this... that went, the 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 roles have reversed. Yes. Now women are like fuck men. Yes. And and men men want to be the prize, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is why this is why my brother's keeper is so important, man. To I believe that it's a need to let men know that yo, man, like we've we we've had a stigma for the longest, and we fucked up, man. You know, and so I understand where those platforms come from. I'm not you know minimizing, it, not talking down to it. I definitely understand, but what I believe can help kill those things is community. Like we just as men have to be comfortable to talk about our shit. Like, yo, you got to be comfortable to say like, yo, I don't know how to love my girl. Yeah. I don't know how to love my spouse. Or I don't know, you know, I don't know how to say that that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know how to say that that made me scared. You know what I'm saying? Like there's strength in those things. I'm telling you, I've been married two years, man, and it wasn't until, until like year after year one, honestly, where I like my wife. Just with time, I just realized I had to tell her the things that made me uncomfortable. Like, yo, you hurt my feelings, and I'm not no weak nigga for saying that. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely, I, I do. Think the more that that's what I'm saying. The more that we continue to become comfortable in ourselves, the easier it'll be for us to deal with any situation and deal with people across the board. But the hardest thing is to be able to have the strength and courage yeah. to deal with yourself because that's not easy. Yeah. What What got you to that level of vulnerability? Like being able to express that with your wife, with your friends, with anybody? Um, man, um, so it happened in 2018. Um, 2018, I had got married January 7th of 2018. Um, 2018 was a crazy year for me, man. I made close to six figures. I um, made more money than I had ever made in my entire life. The year before, I made 22000 Um The year before that, I made 7000 Um So 2018, I'm at six figures. Um, I had a really, really nice place. We, you know, we had a spot in Signal Hill. It's Long Beach. Over, like, literally had the type of spot, bro, like, where as soon as you walk in, we had a view that was, like, overlooking the whole city of Long Beach. Damn. And um, I had a lot of wins, man. I was working corporate. Um, I, you know, I worked, I worked in sales. Um, and, but then I also am a musician, so I was gigging and stuff like that. I had a lot of wins, but I was the most depressed I had ever been. I was extremely suicidal, um, and I couldn't understand it because – I'm like, yo, you work for this, nigga. You're married now. All right, you're married. You know, you got the spot that used to drive by and be like, yo, we're going to live there. You got that spot. You got the job you want. You got the money. You got the opportunity. Why are you so depressed? I was very suicidal, and it was crazy because I had never – I could never understand depression. It never resonated with – it never resonated with me in that way or – I. Didn't he, I wasn't even empathetic towards it until yeah. I actually experienced it myself. And when I experienced it myself, knowing for months and months at a time, when you feel like you're going to die and feeling like as if you left this earth, no one would be there. Um, that's a real feeling, bro. Yeah. It's, just, it's a scary feeling. And But I'm so thankful for that moment, though. Um, because had it not been that moment, had it not had those moments not happened in 2018, um, I wouldn't be the person I am, bro. Um, it literally started with baby steps, bro. Um, to, to be more specific with time, I just started to become like, I started, I opened up that, you know, that my, my suitcase of the things that I was uncomfortable with and the things that I didn't like about myself. And I just, with time, it just got easier, bro. If I can be honest with you, I started going to therapy, which is, if you know me, um, I was totally against therapy. It made no sense for me. Cause I would be like, just in black culture, you know, the way that we're raised is like, if you go to therapy, you crazy, but no, it was actually one of the best things that ever happened to me. Yeah. Or life um for good and if i can be honest with you and this is to tie into you know about the lgbtq community what really started my brother's keeper for me was um i have a therapist his name is michael silverman this man is a white male who was not religious and a homosexual and he was my therapist and he told me he said um you know what I don't know. And mind you, I had never brought this up to his attention, never talked to him about it. Uh, We were just talking about my childhood and talking about, you know, the things that I experienced and just, you know, who I am as a person. And he said, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but you would be the perfect person to just have to, to be like, you know, to create like a community of men and just let men know that, you know, that, yo, you can have swag, you can, you know, you can be, you can have these gifts and you can be married and you can be integral and you can be like a real man of God. Like, I don't know what that looks like, but you, I, you would just be the perfect person to just be able to show other men that, hey, you can be sensitive, you can be in tune with your feelings and you can, you can be a man and there's nothing wrong with that. And he said, you would just, I could see you bringing men together and just, you know, like, I don't know, you guys just sitting down and talking. And for me, 
I started bawling, crying when he said that. Yeah. And he was like, he was tripping out, like, are you okay? Like, why are you crying, man? And I said, listen, I said, this is why, this is why I don't judge anybody. Because I really believe in my soul that God could use anybody. A conversation that I had with God privately of something that I have been dealing with internally. Mind you, I'm 28 years old, bro. I spent a big chunk of my life, the last 27 years of my life, struggling with identity and not feeling like I was enough. And I believe that that's the reason why God chose me to 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 be what I never had. And this is why it's been the most uncomfortable. This is why I'm not possessive over my brother's keeper, because I believe that this is a God thing. I believe that if God says that what I have given you, what I what what doors I open up for you, no man can close them and no one can take them away. I I'm gonna test him by seeing that. I'm not going to be possessive over this. So this is why I give as much as I give. This is why I I'm not possessive over any over anything. I don't try to make my brother's keeper about me because this is a God thing. Because if you really knew me, you would know that, hey, this shit is uncomfortable for me. This yeah. ain't easy. This uh, Being transparent, bro, does nothing but force me every day to carry integrity. Being authentic is not something that's easy for people to do. Because we always want people to know or like the things that we want them to like about ourselves. Yeah. People don't talk about the shit that's uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, it was my my therapist. And this is, like I said, this is why I don't judge people, man. And when that happened, I just knew that, okay, God, this is what I'm supposed to do. And to this day, I'm still, I still don't have all the answers. I still don't know everything. I'm very uncomfortable, but I found comfort in being uncomfortable because yeah. I know that this is a God thing. And I know that if I continue, I really believe that transparency is the way to heal others, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Can I answer the question? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You said what? I, said, I thought I, you I thought you asked me, could you ask me a question? But yeah, you I asked me. Okay, I said do I ask you? Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. Man, what advice? would you give to yourself at that point in your life? If you could go back, if you could go back and talk to that person, what would you tell them? Stop worrying so much what other people think about you. I realize that that is, I just listened to a song before I um, hopped on, man, uh, by Jonathan McGrain, it's called Comparison Kills. And I believe that um, I believe that I robbed myself of so many opportunities because I was fearful of what other people would think of me. Um, and I believe that when you, if I can go back to that person, I would tell him, like, don't care, be you, keep your head down. You know what I'm saying? Find comfort in that there's a reason why you never fit in. I went to a brunch. Back in December of 2018, that changed my life forever, too. Um, and, you know, one of the things was my buddy, he literally was calling everybody out. And he said, mind you, I told you I struggled with identity for the longest time. Uh, my buddy, he called. It was 12 of us. And you were a part of that. That's the first day I met you. Uh, he He called every single person in that in the circle he was just talking he didn't mean anything malicious by it or anything he was just calling every single person in there and he was just like you guys are all destined for greatness and i had always been that person like you know if a prophet has something like how come you don't got something for me or you know or like did you forget about me that's just my own insecurity and my own yeah. forms of abandonment and things like that childhood trauma which childhood trauma is a real thing a real fucking thing um he had somebody close out and he said, I was going to have this other person close out, but yo, can you have some closing words for us? And there was a guy who did not speak the whole day, the whole entire brunch. And he said, he said, you know what? A lot of times, he said, I heard this saying, a lot of times we're looking for someone to save us and be our superhero. But the reason why no one has came is because you're supposed to be your own superhero. And when he said that, bro, I felt like it was God. Yeah. I feel like it was a clear answer from God to say that. And I told my brother that. I told him that. I said, yo, man, 
I said, you don't understand what just happened. I said, you didn't do anything. I said, but the fact that this man said that, I said, knowing that I struggle with identity, knowing that I struggle with being accept accepted and not feeling like I was good enough, knowing, and this man said something to me that I believe was clear word from God, and he doesn't even know it. Because I haven't seen the guy since then, bro. I never had a conversation wow. with him. I never told him. And so that, and, and then, you know, then again, you fast forward to what happened in January when my therapist told me, I don't know why, but you would be the perfect person for boom, 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 boom. Yeah. All these things, this is why I believe in God the way that I do, bro. It's just because, you know, it's so churchy, but they say, you know, there's miracles, signs, and wonders. That's a real thing. I believe that, you know, God always confirmed, for me, he confirmed the things. What's, what lets me know that I'm doing the right thing is that conversations that I have in private that I don't share with other people, conversations that I have with me and God, the confirmation comes up in ways that I don't expect. And so that lets me know that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I would tell my, go back to my old self and be like, yo, you got to be more confident, man. You are enough. That's why I got this tatted. It says enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Just be, yeah. to have a reminder for myself to let myself know that no matter where I am, you are enough. Even if, it, it, it goes deep, bro. It goes back to, you know, the reason why I fell in love with music. Like, there's, there's tons of things that let me know that I literally was living my life in fear of what other people would think of me. And I had lived my entire life and based off of what I, uh, based off of what I thought that I could do. And this last year, like 2019, I spent, I cried a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 2019, bro, I would, there was some day, it was crazy, dude. Like, yes, I had, 2018 was my depression stage. I went through a lot. 2019, I spent a lot of days crying and unlearning everything that I had taught myself up until that point. We had a conversation about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. 2019 was me unlearning everything that I taught myself and me learning this new person that I am. This is why when it goes back to that relationship question you asked, this is why what I would give, the advice I would give to those in relationship or, you know, aspiring to be in a relationship that the best thing that you can do is work on yourself. Because even me as a married man saying that I had to unlearn the things that I taught myself and learn this new person that I am. Yeah, the more that we learn ourselves, the easier it is for us to love and be there for other people, man. I t I swear to you, I agree with you, man. I do. <laughs> um, before we get out of here, what is one lesson or one piece of advice that you you gotten on your journey that you can share with the listeners? One piece of advice that I can share with my, I can share with the listeners, you know, from my journey. Um, that there's strength and vulnerability. It's okay to not be okay. Um, the best gift that you can ever do, the best gift that you can give yourself is to take the time to feel and process through your feelings. Um, why? Because when you do that, you're able to deal with it in a healthy way. Like you're, you're able to go, perspective is everything. Um, I think that this is why a community is important too. You know, if we just take the time to, you know, confess our sins or you don't have to do it with everyone, but you know, those you feel safe to do that with, um, there's power in that, man. There's strength in numbers, there's strength in knowing that you're not the only one that's going through it, but there's also strength in knowing that you're not the only one that has to get through it too. Yeah. So, yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Man, I appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate you having me, Mike, man. I'm really, really proud of you. And, like, I'm happy for you. And I think that it was an absolute blessing that I met you, bro. Like, you're, you are doing some amazing things. And 
I tell you this all the time, just keep being yourself. As weird as it may feel, as misunderstood as you may feel, if you do feel those things, keep doing those things because you will be the reason why so many people will become comfortable in who they are. You know what I'm saying? Just keep being yourself, man. That's And, I, and this is the other thing I would say to that too, is like, this is why I believe that, you know, we have to, I would be a fool to think that I can try to save the world. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I would be a fool to think that I could save the world, man. Um, I can't talk to everybody. Everybody won't talk to me. But this is why our community is important in relationship. I talked to Mike Brown, though. And those who wouldn't talk to me would talk to you. Yeah. Because I talk to you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. It's like, it's, like, it's like a ripple effect. This is why community is so important, man. So I'm honored to even be a part. I really, really appreciate you having me, man. And absolutely, man. <laughs> and we, we always have dope conversations. So I, I've been wanting to bring you on for a minute. So I appreciate Thank you doing this. Thank you. Of course. Before we get out of here, man, because um, I'm going to let you tell everybody where you're at, but I wanted you to pray us out because I know you – you know, you always, anytime you pray, I definitely get something out of it. So, man, uh, please pray us out of here. Um, sure, man. Um, um, dear God, we come to you right now just saying thank you. God, you are a redeemer. You're a restorer. You are everything and all things. It starts with you and it ends with you. I pray for every listener that listens to this podcast today. Um, that they're able to see themselves in this conversation, that they're able to see you, Father. I ask that you meet them where they are. I ask that you continue to show yourself, to show that you are unwavering, that you are that you love with no limitations, Father. Uh, I pray for Mike Brown that you continue to soften his heart as he continues to seek you in the way that he knows how. Um, just continue. We pray for the Art of Letting Go podcast, that you continue to bless this podcast, Father, that you continue to um, use this platform to heal as many people as possible, Father. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. We know that this is just the beginning of many, many things that you have for, for Mike Brown and for his for his many, for the endeavors that he has gone, Father. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, thank you. I appreciate that. I got love for you, man. I, I tell you, you too, man. I know I tell you this in private, but you know, the world needs to know, man, that like, you're doing an amazing job. You just have to keep being yourself. Keep doing it. If you keep being yourself, like it's it's like it's like Adele. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, I know that that may be like, well, what do you mean? I'm not Adele. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> like, for example, like Adele came out with the song Hello, right? She came out with the song Hello in the opera in the time where trap was at its peak. She came out with a ballad, Adele. Now the thing with that is that with being different, you look misunderstood. You're the only one who's doing it. But I think the beauty in that is that the reward is so much greater, man. Because yeah. of that, you know, she went on a world tour and she did, she sold out the Staples Center five nights in a row. The Staples Center, five nights in a row. And that's not the whole tour. The five right. nights in a row at Staples Center is the uh, is the equivalent to some people's whole tour. Right. But the point I'm making in that is just that when you beat, when you're yourself, man, you look, and uh, there's a quote that said, everybody thought that Noah was crazy till it started to rain. And so there's strength in that, man. Just keep being, you keep doing what you're doing, man. And you're touching people, bro. You're he And what's dope about it is that you're healing yourself while healing other people, man. So yeah, man, I'm excited to be a part of that with you, bro. You know I appreciate that. Absolutely. Man, where can the people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at A Olawale. That is A Y E O L A W A L E. That is A Y E O L A W A L E. Um, if you are a man or if you're a woman and you're interested in uh, being a part or know someone that could benefit from being a part of My Brother's Keeper, um, please follow us on all so social media outlets at My Brother's Keeper, which is M Y. B R U T H A S K E E P A H. That is M Y B 
R-U-T-H-A-S-K-E-E-P-A-H, my brother's keeper. Man, I appreciate that. Man, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Man, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, man. Thank y'all for listening. This is Mike Brown. This has been The Art of Letting Go. Peace.